Mothers are magical, amen? amen. You know who also is magical? Our Heavenly Father. As we celebrate Mother's Day, we want to begin our worship by honoring not only mothers, but honoring our Heavenly Father and uh, being able to celebrate this wonderful God. And interesting enough, when they talk about mothers being magical on this Mother's Day, we magically are able to actually sing. We can sing. Now, now one, one uh, thing I have to say uh, under the direction of the bishop is that in order to sing, you need to be fully vaccinated. If you have not been fully vaccinated, uh, you're invited to hum along if you like. But uh, the, the bishop says at this point, those that are fully vaccinated are able to sing. So I'm going to ask you to stand. I know it's been a while. To stand and join us in singing uh, our, our first worship song. Tell you about 
a little Johnny story. Oh, here we go. <laughs> the reason I thought that'd be appropriate is because it seems like when you tell a little Johnny story, mothers across the world appreciate their own children even more. <laughs> well, little Johnny came home from school and he was really late. And his mother asked him, Johnny, why are you late? It's so late. Well, Johnny said, well, I, I met a man who lost his wallet on the street. His mother said, oh, so you tried to help him find his wallet. Well, Johnny frowned and he said, no. He said, I was standing on it and I had to wait for him to finally give up the search. <laughs> Little Johnny's a mess, isn't he? <laughs> and as I said, he makes other mothers appreciate the, the, their own children. <laughs> Today we celebrate Mother's Day. And it is truly a privilege to celebrate mothers. You know, I looked at, if you ever look at the, go online and look at the history of the formation of Mother's Day as we have it today, it's an interesting, lengthy story. Uh, some variations of Mother's Day or Mothering Day has uh, been celebrated throughout, the, throughout many years and across many countries. And one thing I thought was interesting was what kind of came about as as, as our national holiday, Mother's Day, was originally started by a woman from a Methodist church in West Virginia. And if you look at that history, you'll find that there are lots of interesting stories along the way uh, that brought about the celebration of Mother's Day. But even as long ago as you'll read in online the stories and how it began, it began a lot earlier than that. It began with God. Listen as I read from Deuteronomy, from the Old Testament, chapter 5, verse 16. It says this, Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you. What I find interesting is that this command of God to honor our mothers was one of the Ten Commandments. Of all the things that we are to do or not do, the list of only Ten Commandments and honoring our mother and our father, honoring our mother is on that short list. In other words, it's important. It's so important that God included it as one of the top ten. How do we honor mothers? The traditional way for us in, in America is that we, we send Mother's Day car, Hallmark cards. We send uh, flowers or chocolates or candy. We make a phone call or we visit our moms if we can and we invite, maybe invite them out to dinner. I want us to take a look at, a, at, a, at something a little bit more simple in ways, not necessarily easy, but just better way of understanding what we're doing when we honor our mothers. I want to show you four ways in which we are to honor our mothers. The first is that we are to show gratitude. We are to show gratitude. See, it's not enough just to feel gratitude in our own hearts toward our mothers. They need to see it. We need to demonstrate it to show gratitude. Mothers are honored when we demonstrate our gratitude to them. Think about it. Mothers gave us life. They changed our diapers. They fed us and burped us and bathed us and they changed our diapers again. Mothers 
nurtured us in childhood and embarrassed us in adolescence. And they prepared us for adulthood. Mothers have earned our gratitude. Amen? Amen. Second way in which we can honor our mothers, not only to show gratitude, but to show love. To reflect back to them the great love that they had given us throughout the years. A math teacher was quizzing her, her class. She asked uh, one little girl this question. Suppose your mother baked a pie and there are seven of you in the family. What percentage of that pie would you get? She was trying to teach fractions. Seven people in your, in your family. Uh, what percentage of the pie would you get? And the little girl said, one-sixth. And the teacher said, uh, that's wrong. You, you don't seem to know your fractions. And the little girl said, no, you don't know my mother. Because she would say she did not want a pie just so that the rest of us could get a bigger slice. Mothers are well known for demonstrating sacrificial love. And a way to honor our mothers is to demonstrate that very same sacrificial love. We show gratitude, we show love, and a third way is to show trust. Show trust. A mother was watching as her teenage daughter was about to go out, to the, out the door for her first date. The mother said to her before she walked out the door, she said, now, don't forget, you need to be home by 11. But mom, she said, I'm no longer a little child. The mother replied, I know. That's why I want you at home by 11. <laughs> Can I get an amen? amen? See, there's something about not just mothers, but fathers too, that through life experience, we gain wisdom. A mother knows things that maybe teenage daughters don't know or don't think about. And, and so it's important that we, that we honor our mothers at no matter what age it is, because our mothers are always several steps ahead in the life experience category. They offer great wisdom, even if we don't necessarily agree or think that they are right. We need to show trust. Their life experience comes with great wisdom. That's not often understood. Mothers set boundaries for their children that is grounded in wisdom. Now, they are not always right. But the odds are in great favor of mothers and fathers rather than their children. We honor mothers when we show that we trust in that wisdom. And again, it doesn't even matter what age. As, as, as grown adults, we can still learn a lot from our mothers. So we show gratitude. We show love. We show trust. And the fourth way in which we can sh uh, honor our parents is to show latitude. To show latitude. What I mean by that is we have to acknowledge mothers are not perfect. Amen? Amen. Mothers are not perfect, but neither are children. Amen. Sometimes we can honor our mothers by showing them some latitude when they have a bad attitude. They can it may be that they have a bad attitude because they have a, a mad attitude. Or it could be a dad attitude, which is often more the case. 
And it could be a fat a tube. Whatever it is, eventually the mothers are going to return to a gladitude. And so we need to be able to willingly give them some gladitude. So be patient. Now, most of us, well, I, can't, I don't know if I can say most of us, but I can say, say many of us in this room cannot honor our mothers in the same way that other people can do because they have passed on. What do you do? How can we still, or can we, still honor our mothers even after they have passed on? I want you to see a video, but uh, before, I, let me just give you a brief introduction to this video. In 2011, there was a massive earthquake in northern part of Japan. And as a result, a lot of families lost their loved ones. One man who lost several people in his family decided to build a, te a telephone booth. Anybody remember the telephone booth? <laughs> that was the thing that Clark Kent used to jump into to change clothes. <clears throat> this man created a telephone booth that had no electrical connection, no telephone line. There was nothing uh, that connected it to anything. It was a booth with a phone. And the purpose of that phone was so that he could go into that phone booth close the door, and speak to his loved ones who have been passed away. Now that might seem a little odd, a little strange, well, like they really can't talk to them, whatever, but it gave great comfort and peace to this man who lost members of his family, including his mother. He was able to say things to his mother and others that he didn't have a chance to say. He was able to express his love, his gratitude, and other, anything he wanted to be able to talk, to be able to kind of get it off his chest, to be able to talk to those who have already passed on. And, and in turn, several, many of the people in the community started <clears throat> using that same phone to talk to their loved ones who have passed on. It actually became a kind of a, an attraction from not only the people in the community, from people who came from far places to come just for that reason, to see, to experience, to connect with somebody that had died by going to that telephone booth. That idea caught on and it went into other places around the world where people did the same thing. Uh, this video you're about to see is a man who basically nailed a phone to a tree out in the middle of the woods. I want you to listen to his part. Now, I don't really know whether or not somebody that has passed on, whether talking to them in prayer or on this phone or however, that they can actually hear. I don't know. But it certainly has, the idea certainly has brought a lot of comfort to people who wish they, there was things that they had said. Or unsaid. And so a way that you can possibly honor your mother or anyone else is to maybe get on a phone. And it doesn't have to be a phone located in Japan or any other place. It can be your own cell phone. I don't recommend you, if you have a plug-in phone in your home because then you have to hear a dial tone. But if you can get away with getting, being able to turn, uh, open your phone and, and hear nothing but silence, find a quiet, relaxing place where you can be alone. And just talk. I think as odd as it might seem to you at first, I think you too will find some comfort in being able to communicate in a way to your loved ones. Honor your mother. Spend time talking to her. 
tell her about your fond memories that you had with her. Tell her about current news, things that are going on today, you know, the struggles that you might be having with COVID or wh whatever that you're, uh, whatever the, uh, the current news is. Tell her about family members. Maybe it's telling her about a grandchild that she never met. Celebrate Mother's Day. We can honor them while they're living with us. And we can honor them when they pass on. May God grant that for each and every one of us. Amen. Today in our special music slot, we have a, a, a small special presentation that we're reading. I'd like to ask Kevin if he could come up and um, we have something on the aisle here that he's going to pass out. You know, whether we are um, every lady, girl, or woman, you are either you either are a mom or you have a mom. We all have have mothers. Um, in our lives, people that have nurtured us. We have been mothers to people in different ways, through friendship, through love, uh, through a neighbor that we might have loved, through a co-worker that we may have shown kindness. Um, there are a lot of ways to be a mom. And we have a poem today from um, Ron Trammer, Trammer that I wanted to share and just read this short poetry on Mother's Day. Kevin is handing out a copy of this on a small card for you that you can keep it as you like. And on the bottom of it, there's a, a promise kiss, um, a sweet promise kiss that um, God is a reminder that God truly loves us, mothers and all. Um, it's called A Prayer for My Mom. Dear Father in Heaven, bless my mother here on earth. You gave my spirit earthly life. My mother gave me birth. She follows in your footsteps. Her heart is full of love. Please keep her in your loving care and bless her from above by Ron Trainer. And it's a reminder to us that mothers are special and I know that we don't thank them just once a year, but we love them every day whether they're here or whether they have gone on ahead. But we know they wait for us on the other side. And I just pray that you all will be blessed today in whatever way you celebrate as a mother or with your mother or for your mother today. Now let us go to God in prayer. I will begin with prayer, and I invite you to pray after that. Pray silently or pray out loud, however you choose to pray. Lord, we do thank you and praise you for the wonderful idea of mothers. Thank you for creating us, male and female. Thank you for creating mothers and fathers. Thank you, Lord, for the gift that mothers bring to the children, to the world. Thank you for their love. Thank you for their sacrifice. Thank you for their humble hearts. We want to praise you, Lord, as you are our King and Lord and God, and we praise you for your might. You are a mighty God, and you are a wise God and you're a loving God. And we just want to praise you this day and give you honor as well. We want to thank you, Lord, for the gifts that you give us, the provisions of your hand. You provide for all our needs. We want to lift up to you, Lord, our praises to you and our, our thanks to you. And we want to lift up our prayers of praise and, and, and prayers for one another. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord, as we lift them up to you now.
Lord, I want to praise you and thank you for this wonderful church family. <clears throat> I thank you for the hearts and minds of each and every member that makes it such a wonderful family. I pray that you will continue to pour out your spirit on each and every one, that we will continue to serve your purposes, to seek your will, and to be a reflection of your love. We pray all this in Christ's name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen.
And I just have one brief announcement, and that is that the church office <coughs> will be closed tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm going to be away to, to see the two churches I'm going to be appointed to. Uh, and Joyce is out of the office because she's had car trouble and she's got to get her car repaired. So the office will be closed on Monday tomorrow. So it's looks like there's not any other announcements, so let's um, bow our heads and pray over the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the gifts of our mothers who uh, bless us with wisdom and love, and in many cases, courage. Uh, Lord, thank you uh, for the, these faithful people in this congregation and their gifts. Multiply the uh, the impact of these gifts, Lord, so we can reach and help others. In the name of your precious Son, uh, Jesus Christ, amen.